Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Welcome back, ladies and gents. You just heard the trailer for Knife of Ice. This is disc number 73 in the Italian collection from 88 Films. The deets on this, let's be honest, rather expensive version of this movie. I think it's about £25 for this special edition, limited, rigid, slipcase release. Um, I, I can't in good conscience say spend £25 on an 88 Films title, I would wait until they come down in price, but uh, I did, the, I did the, the purchasing here for you guys, fully unaware that I already owned this movie. Yep, I bought a Lindsay Baker box set a while ago, and myself and Dave Parker went through it earlier this year, and guess what, um, at least two of the movies in 
that box set are in the 88 Films Italian Collection series. So, there we go. Anyway, the details on the website are, when the mute Martha Caldwell, played by Carol Baker, discovers her famous cousin, Jenny Ascot, played by Evelyn Stewart, has been brutally murdered, apparently by a strange man who's been stalking them, her world becomes one of a nightmare and disturbing revelation. This is directed by legend Umberto Lenz, who did So Sweet, So Perverse, The Cynic, The Rat in the Fist, and Cannibal Ferox. Knife of Ice from 1972 is a quintessential piece of early 70s jolly creepiness. Dreamlike, br brutal and beautifully presented, Lenz's movie delivers a wonderfully creative mystery replete with a typically European twist in the tale. Uh, this is a special limited edition to 2,000 units only and includes a rigid slip case and new artwork from Rich Davies as a 40-page perfect bound book featuring new writing on the film by Francesco Massiesi and Barry Forshaw. Um, this has a double-sided fold-out poster, a remastered 2K transfer and 235 one aspect ratio from the original negative, high-definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, 2.0 English LPCM mono, 2.0 Italian LPCM mono with newly translated English subtitles, an audio commentary by Giallo Export, Tro Howarth and critic Nathaniel Thompson of Mondo Digital, Yellow is the Colour of Fear, an interview with critic Marcus Stigler, uh, Dressed to Kill, an interview with costume designer Silvio Lorenzi, Il Cinema Criminal di Umberto Lenzi Part 1, Italian credit sequence, English theatrical trailer and a reversible sleeve featuring the original poster. The technical specs on this one, it was released just like a month and a bit ago on the 25th of July. It's regional lot to region B. The audio is DTS HD ME mono. Picture is 1080p HD 2351. Runtime is 1 hour and 31 minutes approximately with languages in English and Italian with English subtitles. So yeah, there has been a review of this already. So if you'd rather hear me chat with a guest about this one, go and check out that review we did towards the start of the year where myself and Dave Parker sat down and covered this movie. Um, I really like this one. I'll be honest. I really like this one. The beauty of the, the the run of four movies that Carol Baker did with Umberto Lenzi is that she, unlike a lot of actresses, I think of one that springs to mind, like when, an Edward Schwenick, for example, who, who got a chance to stretch her acting chops, but was always kind of typecast in similar roles. Um, the beat of this one is, in all four of those movies, uh, Carol Baker appears to play a different side of a kind of manic jalo character, whether it's the, you know, the hyper-paranoid, the villain itself, um, the unsuspecting hero, or in the case of this one, a character who is the unreliable narrator. Um, with her being mute as well, it adds an extra an extra level of, of talent to her. She's essentially having to act through expressions in her eye movements, and she still delivers it. She, she's fucking great in this movie. You could argue, and I'd probably back you up, this is her best performance in all the Lindsay movies, purely because the crutch of dialogue is removed for the actress, so she is forced to act like with her body and with her expressions to convey the same thing that dialogue would. Um, this one is one that is weird in a lot of respects. It kind of starts off almost kind of like a like a gothic uh, horror movie with lots of like mist and fog and kind of travelling to the house out in the middle of nowhere sort of thing. And then it becomes your very kind of standard Jallo setup. There are murders happening. They're happening in and around a wealthy affluent family's house. And yeah, the police aren't quite sure. And our main hero... Carol Baker is going to try and get to the bottom of it, but she might not be the hero that she thinks she is. Plenty of red herrings. I mean, this movie goes out its way to give you loads of them. And it has a great ending. I fucking love the ending to this one because it is just so over the top. And when you think about it, so blatantly fucking obvious. But uh, give credit where credit's due. Lindsay plays this straight down the middle. There ain't no camp in this one. This is played straight down the middle and that's to its credit and that's how it works. 
Lenzi's cinematography is peak in this one. I love this. Locations are vibrant and rich. The setups and scenarios are great. We even get like a kind of like a basement dungeon scene for no reason at all. This movie could end anywhere, but that's where they take it. We'll get the kind of gothic garden, um, the quiet Italian town. We get it all. And he delivers it really, really, really well. Even that gothic scene that I was talking about with the kind of mist and fog at the start is delivered great. It's, it's fucking awesome. The score is beautiful and it's rich. And the characters are all wonderful. It is it's a great movie. It's not maybe as violent or as bloody as other Umberto Lenzi movies. Certainly, like you move him forward like two years and he gets a lot more violent in the in the Jallo world that he's, he's playing in. And this one's kind of reserved and held back a little bit, but I think it's to its credit. And he knows not to go too overboard. I mean, as a director that at times can get a little bit too eyes me. And he doesn't do that in this movie. He kind of plays it, like I say, relatively straight. And that could make a movie like this live or die very easily. Because Jallos, by the time this movie came out, were far more bombastic. We're in 72, we're two years into it. We're already starting to get some of that kind of psychedelic work worming its way through um, but he manages to deliver it and even at this era he's delivering an ending which audiences will have seen the twist ending that comes in this one done before but maybe not done this way and that's also to its credit it's one of the reasons I kind of I kind of love it for what it does um, yeah like I say Carol Baker is, is great in this one and the special features are awesome as well I, I think the, the fact you get the first installment of um, the Il Cinema Criminal di Umberto Lenzi, which the first part was on the previous release that we discussed. Um, the fact that you're getting that, kind of awesome. Uh, it's worth checking into. It's a, it's a surprisingly smart deep dive into, into the work. Um, and also, you, the Yellow is a Colour Fear is a great uh, interview segment with, with critic uh, Marcus Stieglerlinger. Um, and as always, uh, Troy Holworth and Nathaniel Thompson give a wonderful commentary. I've not listened to the whole one, but I do like to when I'm watching these movies through, switch on for a couple of minutes, switch off, then later on, switch on, switch off. Do that a couple of times during the movie just to get a feel for where the discussion's going. Are they still talking about the same point? Are they following what the movie's saying? And they deliver the goods as always. So, yeah, across the board, this is it's a, a, a really good jello i mean it's not top tier jello by any stretch of the imagination but it might be up there with something like so sweet so perverse it might be my favorite of the collaborations and it delivers something really really strong uh, checking it back for the second time this year maybe the fourth time in the last two years through a series of confusions that if you listen to my conversation with dave park you'll see why that was i was just struck by once again how well this holds up i could watch this twice in a year and not feel like oh here we go and that trust me is a big deal um watching some of the the jellos that we have covered in the last year and a half you do start to get a little bit of jelly fatigue that sets in where you kind of feel like you've watched the same movie 20 times and this one at least goes out its way to try and differentiate itself, not only for the work Umberto Lenzi has done already with Carl Baker, but in terms of just where we are in 72, it does stand out for that, and it's a ton of fun because of it. And when it comes to grade for this one, I give it a 4 out of 5. I think that's what I gave it before. If I gave it a 3.5, I'm now going slightly up, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I, a 4 is what I'd give it. I kind of love it for what it is, and... Yeah, that's really all I have to say about this one. Like I say, I think you should see it. I don't think you should pay £25 for it, especially in today's economy. £25 for a single film with a couple of special features, as much as I enjoy it, and even though it's a collector's edition, feels very expensive and feels very kind of grab assy. So uh, maybe wait for it to either come into a standard edition or come down in price a little bit, or bulk buy. See if the, there's a deal somewhere where you get this one, you get another couple of movies for a reduced cost, do it that way. Um, £25 to spunk up the wall for a movie that you may have never seen before, it seems excessive.